Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we're here at uh, Phil's Coffee today. I love this place. No, no, it's great. We got the whole place to ourselves. Everybody's uh, <laughs> sleeping, I guess. Yeah, yeah, well, it is pretty early. These students ain't hungry. You know what I'm saying? It was dark when we came here this morning. Like yeah. 6 <laughs> it's, it's different. It's actually pretty cold out, too, today for California. Anyway. The, uh, I mean, it's always fun and exciting to talk about the uh, the weather and stuff, but it's been insanely foggy. Yeah, yeah. Like, I been. have zero... Uh, Can't see. No. Yeah, it's all bad. I'm like, you know, if this light coming up is red, I don't think my car's going to stop in time. Like, that's how bad it's been. Can't see Jack Squat out there. I don't, I've never seen a guy named Jack squat before, but yeah. I would imagine he doesn't go to depth. You can't, you can't see shit out there. How are your eyes without your glasses, actually? I'm curious. They're, they're okay. They're I can okay. see 2020, but like yeah. just with, with glasses, it's just easier. You know, and plus I'm, I'm staring at a screen or a phone or any kind of screen mm-hmm. for a long duration of time. Then they get tired. So yeah, then you they get weird. use those blue light things? Blue light things. Blue light blockers. Oh yeah. Things. Sorry. Um, not as much because the prescription is a little bit different. Okay. I know I got I got used to these ones, and so when I switch to the the like the filtered ones, it's a little bit different. And then I'm like, ah, I gotta get reused to the new, uh, and I'm not gonna mess with it. You're seeing the whole world through a filter. Hmm. Technically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't I don't I don't know. It's like the uh, in Seema's black, the Matrix type. <laughs> Just setup. in case you didn't. Know. Are you sure about that? Uh, maybe not. Some people can't tell. Well, some people think I'm something different. Really? Yeah. What Where do they you? think you are? I don't want to say. I'm just going to keep that to myself. But, hey, have you ever, I mean, this is, people have talked about this before, but I'm just so curious how other people actually do visually see the world. Like, like yeah, no, I we all see colors how, the same. How or, about this? You've never seen your face unless it's been from a reflection. Right? <laughs> that's right. Like that's so a, you have no idea what you or look a like. Picture, which is a ref- yeah, it's, it's a still, still reflection, reflection cameras of capture. That's creepy, man. This is real good coffee shop. Well, it's kind of like uh, remember we the be smoking right now, <laughs> <laughs> smoking something. Remember that? Uh, remember that first time you uh, heard your own voice? Like recorded on yes. something, like on a video or something. You're like I sound like an idiot. Yep, 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 yep. Or sometimes you somehow, in the middle of talking, you sometimes kind of almost hear yourself, and then it makes you like uh, really like reserved about the rest of the shit that you say. Because like well, I'm not sure if I'm on the right track or not here. Well, when we do the, the I sound dumb. Yeah. When we do the live streams, like on the uh, the Super Training channel, there's a delay in my headphones with that setup, so I can literally hear myself as I'm going. It's that's really tough, but. The first time I heard my voice, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, like, uh, on Home Alone, how he had that toy that he would record. <laughs> yeah. So my cousin had one, and we used to do little, like, kid radio shows on that. Shit. I would kill to get those tapes right now. <laughs> we were so dumb, but at the same time, like, it, it'd be really awesome to have that. You can still get those, right? I mean, they still exist. Hmm? What do you mean? Like, the toys or whatever? Like, yeah. the the Do you guys still have those over there? Like, where you could get them back or no? No, I. Who knows where the heck that stuff oh. is? Yeah. My uh, my niece Olivia one time was uh, a referee for me and Quinn. We were playing volleyball on a on a tennis court, <laughs> and we're we're going back and forth, and she's uh, keeping count of everything. Mm-hmm. And I recorded some of it, and then we watched it back. Um, and Olivia's like, "Oh my god!" She's like, "I don't sound like that," because she was confused, like. <laughs> She's like, my voice sounds so high. I'm like, you're you're a seven year old girl, or however she's like eight years old or whatever she was at the time. I was like, yeah, you're yeah, that's your voice. No, that's, we didn't record something different. That was your voice. Yeah, that's the thing, man. Like when I look back at like YouTube videos on my old YouTube channel, like the first video I ever made. I remember after I made, it, I'm like, oh man, that's that's not that bad. That's, that's, that's actually pretty good. I looked at it like a few months ago. I'm like, God. Damn, I sound stupid. Like I just like I just like the camera and everything, the way I was speaking, it just sounded so just stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's how funny old, how you think something's so you? good. I was like I was twenty one or twenty two. Oh, okay. But like, you know, I thought my delivery was cool and stuff, and then I look back and I'm like, Wow. That or you're, you're like so bad. Ten, ten times slower than you thought you were? Just yeah, just the way I spoke. Like I was trying to speak a certain way, and it's like not the way I actually speak. And it was just like it's so funny when you think at that point in time, you're like, "Wow, this is great." <laughs> and then you look back at it, you're like, "This did not age well. Like, this, <laughs> this absolutely sucks." 
Yeah. Well, you're not the only one. Gary V says the same thing. He's like, you look at my first video. He's like, and then within 10 episodes, it was completely different because I was holding back thinking that uh, I was going to alienate some of the, the buyers of, of, uh, of like all the wines and stuff in the mm-hmm. store. I was like, damn, if that guy you know can look back and be like, huh, I look dumb. Yeah, like, okay, it gets, it's, it's okay for everybody else. It gets better as you go because you learn, you know, you, you learn from, you learn from really listening to yourself, you know? I don't really listen to this podcast that often, but I listen to a, uh, I have listened to a lot of stuff over the years, and it helps you kind of hone in your craft and what you're going to talk about. Yeah, I listen to this podcast a lot. I yeah. try to. Yeah, it helps yeah. you get yeah. better because mm-hmm. yeah. you're like, damn, I didn't say this, or I should have said that, or why did I say that? Yep. Mm-hmm. Why am I cussing so much? <laughs> yeah, and Sima, you, you know, I, we just had a conversation about this the other day. It's like I don't know. I don't think I do. I have a potty mouth. You guys think <laughs> I still don't? I still don't even know where I stand. Like with cussing, like sometimes I'm like fuck it, and other times I'm like I shouldn't be talking like that. But like yeah. I'm like that's my problem. So sometimes <laughs> I might cuss a bunch, and sometimes I might not do it that often. I, I told Stephanie, I'm like, hey, the, the next kid, like I'm cussing in front of them. I'm gonna be kind of like a dick, but in a funny way. I'm like just know that that's happening. She's like, she starts crying. I'm like, Are you okay? She's like. I just, that's the first time I ever talked about how you're going to raise the next kid. I'm like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, oh, that's precious. Yeah. Cause we were watching, uh, the Avengers and Tony Stark says shit. And then, or something like that. He cusses in front of the kid and the kid says, it. he's like, Hey, you can't say that word. And then she's like, but you did. Uh, anyway, they got into it and he, he ended up telling her to, that he was going to sell all her shit or something like that. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think like. I don't think there's so much wrong with kids and ah oh, shit, you know. It's just, right. It's it's not that uh, unless they're doing it at somebody or at a parent. That was yeah. the thing. Yeah, uh, I told <laughs> my you, kids. Dad. Yeah, I told my kids like, yeah, you can't do it at somebody. You can't, you know, you can't do it at school. That kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I've heard them before say like shit and stuff, and like we just kind of laugh. I mean, we don't really, <laughs> you know, I've never really heard them say anything too crazy. Yeah. Um, which is good, but uh-huh. I'm sure they do, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so today we're talking about dieting and budgeting or carnivore and budgeting or on a budget. I think uh, just trying to get healthy food, right? Healthy trying to food. get healthy food on a budget because I think uh, you see the per pound cost of uh, you know a steak or per pound cost of chicken, and it's certainly a lot different than... Uh, you know, if you're if you're kind of buying junk food, right? If you're rolling through a fast food joint, they sometimes have like ninety nine uh, cent mm-hmm. options, right? Yeah. And so uh, that's what we'll try to we'll try to figure out today and see if we can provide people some value so they can shop a little wiser. Yeah. So one awesome way, if you were to get the absolute best quality beef, where would you go? Uh, Piedmontese. There you go. Yeah. Piedmontese.com. Yeah, so that's P-I-E-D-M-O-N-T-E-S-E.com. Our homies at Piedmontese.com, they're going to hook you guys up with 25% off your order. And if your order is $99 or more, you get free two-day shipping. Um, it's just the absolute best. You guys know we talk about it nonstop. You need to try it if you haven't already. But uh, make sure you get the flat iron steaks. I've been telling everybody to get that. And then we always mention, like I always mention, it's going to keep it short, but just cook those steaks. Shorter than you'd cook a normal steak because they cook quick. There you so, go. so you don't overcook it. Keep yeah. that in mind. I think uh, the first place to start is to, you know, try to get involved in one of these like super stores, you know, get involved in like a Costco or a Sam's or a. I think that's probably the first place that you want to start uh, because they just have they have very inexpensive options. And mm-hmm. when you look at like steaks, I think most steaks are going to be fairly expensive per pound compared to like hamburger meat. Um, you buy the 80, 20 hamburger meat in the big old roll. I used to buy that all the time. That used to be like what I lived off of. Um, that's usually the, your most, uh, inexpensive thing that you can get. I think, <clears throat> I think you get a pretty big sized, uh, I forget, I wish I remember how much, uh, it weighed, but I think it's like seven or eight bucks at like Costco. Yeah. And you can live off that bitch for a while. That's that, that big old tube, right? Yeah. That big old giant. Every tube. single time you grab it, you have to do something inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, this is a giant meat tube. Yeah. Meat log. Yeah. And then uh, one thing that I learned is, um, you know, I, everybody knows I love in and out. I go get mustard fried everything. Um, it used to be flying Dutchman. Um, that got a little bit expensive and also expensive as far as like counting macros and stuff. So I would just get the hamburger patties, but then I'd go home and I would put it in white rice and have monster mash with it. And it's like, right. Oh, this is such a cool treat. 
the other day, I'm like, you know what? Let me just do my home, like home cooked ground beef, put mustard in it. And it, it didn't taste like exactly the same, but it was pretty damn close. Mm. Like so much to the point where like I can drive by in and out and be like, you know what? I'm going to make my own. And it's, it's, I mean, obviously it's going to be cheaper. It's going to be healthier. Mm -hmm. It's going to be just more, more uh, cost effective, more efficient, more everything. And it's very freaking close. So if you guys do like in and out or you want to try an in and out alternative, just put mustard in your monster mash. It's, it's insane. You know, one thing I think like, cause this episode's called carnivore on a budget or dieting on a budget. Budgets in there, but I think the prime thing that's not happening with a lot of people, not because I'm guilt, I was guilty of this too, is actually making a budget for the food. Right. Like most people don't know how much they spend out grabbing different things at whether it's In and Out, whether it's a coffee shops, etc. Like if they added that up, it would. It, it's scary to like you actually tip. Like I didn't even want to at a certain point because I didn't want to see the number. I was I was like purposefully ignorant to it. You know, but then when I saw the number, I'm like, oh shit, you know, I could, if I just spent this or took this and spent it on groceries, I wouldn't think this meat is so expensive. Yeah. You know, it's so it's similar to like checking out your screen time app. You don't want to, you don't want to find out the answer. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, (laughs) it's hard. It's hard to find stats on this. I tried to look up a lot of information on it uh, a few weeks back, but uh, if you guys had to take a guess, uh, how much, like what percentage of people's income do you think people spend uh, from a percentage standpoint on uh, food? It, like average? Mm-hmm. I'd say it would be anywhere between 20 and 25%. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I think people will assume that it's 20%, mm-hmm. but I will probably put it up more closer to 35, 40. Yeah, it was about 30%. And I would say that it would probably shock people. I think it's probably more than that still. Yeah. Because, yeah, what are, what else are you spending money on? I know we got, like, cars and, you know, we have a house mortgage and things like that. And that's probably where, you know, a lot of your money's being spent as well. Just transportation and shelter, right? Um, entertainment would be in there as well. And then, and then food has got to be a, a massive uh, part of that. And I think that the mistake that we might be making is we're seeing signs all the time and billboards and advertisements on TV constantly saying 7.99, 8.99, 5.99 and you're like, "Oh, well, lunch is under 10 bucks." You know, I, I never spend over 10 bucks on lunch, but actually pay attention to the next time you get lunch and actually see how much you pay and I would I would be surprised if it was under 10. I don't know how you would get under 10 bucks unless you maybe went to a fast food place and ate some junk. Yeah, I think that one of the more um the, one of the cheapest things I'll say I've ever done was I went to um, to Chipotle with my own chicken. <laughs> I got, I got oh a ve- I got a I got God. a veggie bowl, and then I put my own chicken in it. Have you ever ended up at two fast food restaurants in the same day? Yes, <laughs> of course. That, that feels pretty fat, doesn't it? It's pretty bad, especially because <laughs> Chipotle is right next to Habit Burger, and I'm like, oh man. If I put the habit burgers inside the Chipotle like bowl, that'd be really, really, really good, <laughs> dude. You know this place called Monsoon Burger? <laughs> yeah, okay. I want to. It's really good. Number one, you have to actually check it out. It's very good. Their beef is amazing. But I went there and I got my first burger, and I told them double patty, two eight ounce patties. So I went home, ate it, but they only gave me one patty. And by principle, I was like. Y'all can't do me like that. So I'm back later on in the day. I'm like, you guys gave me one patty. I want to order a double patty. Can you please just make sure to give me that second patty this time? I didn't ask for a discount. I just wanted to make sure they gave me my second patty so I could enjoy the burger with two patties instead of one. You had to go back. I had Did to they go give back. you a discount? No, they didn't. Oh, okay. But I got my second patty and I was happy. But just, that, just going to guess it was a, a straight male that took your order then. Yeah, it was. Yeah, because if it was a chick, you would have got a discount. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, I'll get your patties for you. Yeah. Um, so I brought up the, the whole cheap thing about uh, Chipotle and stuff because, I, don't, I mean, how do you get somebody over that, that like, feeling of, like, well, I, I'm going to go out with friends. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to enjoy myself with everybody else. I don't want to be the guy that doesn't eat because I'm saving money or I'm trying to be healthy. Like, I don't know. Like, how can we change someone's mindset? I think, uh, you know, trying to eat at home. Uh, as much as you can can be really useful and even if you are going to go out and eat with your friends maybe you are realizing that you're going to a pretty nice restaurant and eat before you go out and in that way I mean you can make whatever choice you want to make food wise and you're kind of camouflaged in with the crowd you don't have to really worry too much like if you were to 
um, you know, if you had a, a an open diet where you you have a little bit of freedom, maybe you would eat um, you know some steak at home. It'd be a lot less ex- lot less expensive eating steak at home as opposed to a restaurant. And then maybe when you went out to eat, maybe you had like a salad or something. You know, you can kind of like camouflage yourself and mix in with the crowd a little bit easier that way. Yeah, yeah. And steak at restaurants is so overpriced. Like it really is steak massively. At, yeah, steak at BJ's and places like that. Like I can make a steak at home that's better, number one, but much less expensive. Yeah, that's all I was gonna say. I'm like, you're, you're. I mean, unless it's like a super crazy expensive steakhouse. You're kind of gonna always be a little like underwhelmed with whatever steak that they make. Yeah. Like nobody went to Applebee's and said, "Holy crap, that was an amazing steak!" Like that just doesn't happen. Or Denny's. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Have you guys ever gotten a uh, like a, a big? I, I think they're roasts, right? Where you can like cut and make your own steaks. Yep. I've never done that because I, I, I look at the price tag, right? Right. I'm like, damn, that's like a hundred bucks or whatever. You know, whatever the, the cost is. I'm like, mm, I'll just spend twenty five on three. And somehow in my head, that makes sense. So your budget is going to kind of coincide with your cooking skills, too. You know, like you'll just like, oh, I'll just get hamburger patties. Cause that's all I can afford. But that's probably also maybe the only thing that you know how to cook. If you learn how to cook like a roast or a turkey or a chicken. I mean, we've talked about chicken before on the show. I think at Costco, you can get a chicken, like an entire chicken. A rotisserie chicken for five bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for five. I mean, and maybe you don't love chicken, but if you do, then that's a, an amazing option. Um, and then just learning how to cook can really help a lot. It can really help open up your playbook in terms of what you're able to buy. Because if you know how to make roasts and tenderloins and things like that, which is really not hard, uh, all you would need is a cookbook. Pay attention to some of the rules in the cookbook, or you can just look online. I mean, there's YouTube nowadays, and you can learn how to cook any roast or any kind of thing that you want. It's really not difficult at all. It's really just a matter of like, you know, preheating your oven to a certain amount and then like just leaving it in for a certain period of time. And you can use, uh, you have that, uh, meat, uh, temperature thing, right? Yeah. Did, did you get yours? I got it. Have you used it yet? I haven't used it Not, yet. Okay. It's it just, it simplifies things, especially because like, I remember hearing people talk about like, oh, I would cook chicken, but I know there's like salmonella in it if you don't cook it right and blah, blah, blah. So, I'm like, okay, well get a, 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 a thermometer and you know for sure that it's good to go. Like right. it takes all the guessing game out of it. Yeah, and what it's, is it's it? So uh, easy. There's a certain amount of degrees you can get to to get rid of all the. You can. Yep. You can be a. You can be. Ninety nine point nine percent sure that you blasted all the yeah. pathogens and shit out of there. One hundred and sixty five degrees internal temperature for chicken. Uh, one thirty five for Take about. Notes. Yeah, one thirty five internal temperature for a steak for like a like a medium medium well almost, and. Uh, it, it's like I said, it, it just simplifies things and you kind of feel like, yep, my, my food's done. I know what I'm doing. I'm a man or I'm a you know pro chef, whatever, you know, so yeah. it's, it just, uh, it just simplifies it and it takes one of those hurdles out of the equation. By the way, I've, I've been getting a lot of DMs. I think you have too about like brands of air fryers. And I, like, <laughs> yeah. I just want to answer this question right now. Just go on Amazon because there are air fryers that range anywhere from like $50 to 200. Just get whatever's in your price point that is like four or five stars because honestly all these air fryers do this do very similar Mm -hmm. things and and so yeah that's one easy way to get better at cooking is just get an air fryer Mm -hmm. yeah again simplify it it just makes it so much easier makes it faster too i mean it's an air fryer cooks your your food up uh uh pretty damn quickly again you know i think you know going back to like kind of buying in bulk and, and trying to find trying to find deals there's a lot of apps available nowadays that people are using um, and there's a lot of, I mean, you can just go old school and get the newspaper and get coupons and stuff yeah, like super that. Super couponing. Yeah, you, you can you can do all that kind of stuff. And there's um, some people were telling me about some apps online. I'll try to get the name for us so we can put it in the uh, show notes I and saw stuff. One oh, yeah. was like Flip. Oh, right? oh yeah, maybe that's it. Yeah, here I think go. we have it from our oh, research our research team. What do we got over here? Oh yeah, we got the Flip app. There it is, Flip. I got to download yep. that. What's that app do exactly? I guess it, it just helps you find discounts on stuff. Uh, it applies uh, filters and gives you kind of discounts on like bulk uh, items. Sick. Um, I and, use a lot uh, of Rakuten too. <laughs> it's another website. Yeah, yeah. Is it a, a website? Oh my god, we're getting uh, some getting intel a look at it right here. Sweet. That's flip, but you're yeah, right it's now. like super uh, low prices at like Safeway and stuff like that. Oh man, and then finding. Um, Finding different, uh, finding different grocery stores to shop at too. Like, um, 
right down the street from from my house is uh is a nugget supermarket but like nugget everyone always thinks is crazy expensive and it, and it, it is expensive in comparison to a lot of the other stores but they also normally carry higher quality products so like yeah. you if you went to nugget and looked at like their cereal it would be the same as it is everywhere else but they're going to have weird offshoot items like they'll have you know a wide array of like dark chocolate and they'll have a wide array of like different steaks and prime meats and stuff that you can get. And those are going to be, and you look at those in comparison to being at like Safeway, you're going to be shocked. You're like, Oh my God, this place is crazy. But it's really more so to do what they have high, a little bit higher quality stuff at, at places like that. Yeah. If, if you're always looking for some kind of gluten free option, nugget will always have it. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. That's what we've had to do a couple of times. It's Didn't more of a health Piedmont conscious team? place. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah they yeah. do. It's, it's, a, it's a lot surprising. more expensive than what we can offer you guys, but they have it there if you run out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got some uh, some of those Piedmontese sliders sent to me yesterday. Mm. I'm really pumped about that. And then they, they keep sending me that Dynasty bone-in <laughs> ribeye, probably because they hear us talking about it on this podcast. Bone-in yeah. ribeye? Yeah. Tomahawk. Tomahawk. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah Tomahawk. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this looks so good. <laughs> God dang. I don't want to get hungry. So no, no. Anyway. Mornings, we always talk about food. It's yeah, like a, it's a trap for me. But, um, yo, if you guys don't have a Costco or a Sam's Club membership, you have to get one. Because, like, when I'm not, like, when I was in college and even after that when I was training people and I wasn't bringing in that much money, those places were so clutch in terms of getting all the chicken I needed, all the beef I needed. It was really, really inexpensive because there was so much. And eggs, too. I'd get that 60 count eggs every single time because like it, the, the price of eggs was just so much lower. Yeah. So I saved so much money there. It's like what? 60 bucks for an entire year for the, wait for, oh, a, yeah, for yeah, a Costco yeah. membership. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. It's not bad. At all. And also too, on the kind of hierarchy of things that you should be worried about. Like, I don't think, I think the main thing you should be worried about is managing your body weight. And, and I would put that as a priority and I would, I would make payments towards that every single week. And then additionally, I wouldn't worry too much about like the omega three eggs, like the mm-hmm. the flax uh, seed fed chickens and uh, <laughs> the, the grass the grass fed grass fed uh, beef and like I, I just wouldn't I wouldn't really waste your time with that. I would just my main concern would be like okay I, I'm I feel like I'm pretty unhealthy. I want to get in better shape. And then if you you know if you start to have more money or you start to run into um, a situation where you can afford those other foods and you go for it at, as goes your values and, and your ideas in your head of, of what that means to you. Yeah. To me, I don't think it really makes a huge difference. I think that, you know, uh, advertising and propaganda will always win. It will always, it'll always be there. You're always going to think that this like shampoo or cream or body spray or whatever the fuck it is just because it's expensive that's always and and it's advertised to you all the time yeah you're just going to think that that's the best like that's the way to go that's that's what i should be doing and it just it's just kind of the way of the united states and that's that's just where we're at but i don't think you know there's not going to be somebody that eats omega-3 eggs versus regular eggs who's going to live to be 170 years old and then another just super easy way to you know, help, help the budget is like following something like whether it be carnivore diet or the vertical diet, you have like four or five things that you buy and then that's it. Like, so when, when those things go on sale, you can buy in bulk, but also like, you're not kind of going around the entire grocery store. Like, Oh, this looks pretty good. I'll grab this. Like, Oh, I remember. Okay. We're going to grab that. And then by the time you're done, it's like, Oh wow, that's $300 on food. I didn't mean to do that. I came in here for enough ingredients yeah. to make monster mash and like if you if you go if you show up to like a party you know people bring like chips and dip and sodas and stuff right well when you're eating healthy you just cut out all three of those things you, th- those are not even and then you're you're um you're even more conscious of what you show up with when you start to show up places you're like i don't think i'm gonna bring that i think i'll bring like deviled eggs or something like that and you go to the store and like those aren't that expensive and you know, you just you make better choices because you're constantly thinking about not just your own health. You start to think about other people's health. You're like, dude, like last night I was uh, putting meat in the freezer, and I I just saw like there was some stuff from Christmas that was still in there. It was like cookies and some sort of weird toffee crunch almond thing or whatever. I'm just I just threw it all away. I'm like, mm-hmm. no one in the house needs this for anything, so I'm just gonna fucking chuck it. <laughs> I just got rid of it. 
you know, I can picture myself listening to this like years back. And one of my main, I don't need a lot of variety nowadays in terms of food, but one of my main things back in the day or my excuses for eating out was like, oh, I need variety. You know, I can't just eat these same things every single day. But the thing is, is like, I know that at that point, I'd be saying that and giving myself an excuse, but I wouldn't actually put in the effort to look up different recipes mm. for good food that I can make easy to cook at home that would give me the variety and it would be less expensive. So if you're like a college age person listening to this, like you want variety, seriously, it's variety is very inexpensive. You literally just need to Google it. You just need to Google some of those recipes and they're free. Mm-hmm. Even look at uh, Stan Efferding's like bone broth on the website that they have where, you know, you don't even have to purchase them from there, but you can look at all the different varieties. I suggest you purchase them from him because they're they're actually really, really good. They taste really good. Mm-hmm. They might not fit your uh, price uh, category at the moment, but they're delicious. But, you know, he'll, he'll have a monster mash that's primarily just meat. It might be like meat and carrots, meat, carrots, bone broth. Mm-hmm. Then he might have another one that's like meat, carrots, spinach and bone broth. Um, then he'll have another one that has peppers in it and he'll have another one that has onions, like all these different options. As soon as you, as soon as you go and put peppers into a recipe, it's a totally different meal. Yep. It it changes everything. Or you throw a little cheese in something or, you know, there's small adjustments. And then, you know, if you're on, if you're on kind of a regular diet, just trying to, uh, be in good shape and you're not really trying to be carnivore or keto, um, shit, rice is very expensive. Potatoes are very inexpensive. Um, vegetables can sometimes be a little pricey, but like for how much you can use of them and they they really don't cost a ton. And it just depends on, you know, what, like what you're buying, you're buying prepackaged stuff. You know, if you're buying the packaged spinach, then it's going to cost more than, you know, buying a, a big old bundle of uh, spinach, things like that. Yeah. And I mean, hopefully people don't get too weirded out, but like I buy all my produce at Walmart cause it's the cheapest and I don't eat vegetables like at all like I, I don't but we use all these ingredients to make salsa which I pour on literally everything and mm-hmm. that helps a ton yeah and then another thing that like I didn't I didn't experience until I moved into a bigger space where I could actually have like room for it was an additional freezer please tell that <laughs> please tell that meme bro so the, the oh man okay so the meme I woke up to this morning was White people be like, no, 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 not that fridge, the one in the freezer or the one in the garage. Damn, I ruined it. <laughs> but I, I was cracking up because I'm like, oh, shit, like, yeah, I can actually say that now. But, you know, anyways, yeah, being able to buy in bulk and have the space to throw it in the freezer in the garage mm-hmm. is huge. Yeah, I have a freezer that's just absolutely enormous. I have, a hu- <laughs> I have a huge fridge. The thing is like, I don't know, probably like maybe about... uh 10 feet tall it seems like now it's probably like it's probably like about eight feet tall but then it's probably a good like four or five feet wide i mean it's huge and then on top of that i have a a freezer in my i have a freezer in my garage that's full of meat and then i have two other fridges in my i don't know how any of this happened (laughs) but i got three refrigerators and a freezer just food coming out everywhere yeah well i guess when you have a house that big you need to fill it up somehow <laughs> yeah. you need to take up some space it's, so. in, it's in case there's an, uh, a zombie apocalypse is uh, my excuse yeah well okay so back to the freeze like what happens when a buddy of yours is a hunter and he's like hey i have all this extra meat do you want some mm-hmm. i need hunter friends i know and i got family members that are uh, hunting and then casey in the warehouse he always has something too but like, how cool will, will it, would it be if you had the like uh, opportunity to be like, oh yeah, please, I'll take whatever you got, and you can throw it in your freezer. So it, it's a it's a small buy in. It's like probably like maybe a hundred bucks. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, then you're set. You're good to go. Yeah. All you gotta do is thaw it out, and you're. Yeah. Or even in an air fryer, I heard some people just throw stuff in frozen, right? Yeah, you can you can cook frozen food yeah. in there. Same with the instant pot too. Mm-hmm. You know, one cool thing I was thinking about, like, okay. This isn't carnivore, but for a lot of people that are craving fast food type things, like you can make like fries that aren't horrible or Mm -hmm. macro unfriendly in an air fryer by just cutting up some potatoes, seasoning them. You don't even have to toss oil on them if you don't want to. You don't have to toss oil on them, put them in there. Boom, you got fries and they're really freaking good. Yeah, and they'll taste amazing. They will. Exactly. And there's and they're much healthier. Like one thing I notice, and you guys tell me if you notice this too. Anytime I cook at home. Shits are great. 
poop is great. Oh yeah, yeah everything's yeah. awesome. I go out and I eat like not just not just fast food, but even at a restaurant that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. All right, I have the shits. Like it, that's that's one reason where I'm just like I can make everything better if I just make it at home. You know, they're almost at, at almost every restaurant they're going to dump quite a bit of oil on your food because they're trying to really they're trying to really make it taste good. If and if you're trying to you know, get the sizzle and the kind of fry of a uh, and a sear of a of meat. You know, if you have oil on it, it kind of makes it more effective. I don't think it really makes it taste any better because when I cook stuff at home, I never use any of that stuff, and it mm-hmm. it still tastes really good. But it, you know, in in their case, you know, they might have you know, it might sound gross, but like their stuff's probably not as fresh as what you're cooking at home too. Mm. I mean, you could have something that you bought from the store immediately put in the freezer and then you thaw it out. Or sometimes you buy something right from the store right then and, and eat it, which is my favorite way to eat uh, steaks and stuff like that. I love having uh, fresh meat. It, it makes a huge difference, but you know, I think that um, people aren't really conscious of that, of, of what you just pointed out is the fact that, you don't know what they're using in a restaurant. And we, we, we did that video with uh, Chef Rush. I mean, he just kept squeezing oil on the, on the thing over and over again. And they call it olive oil, but it's, it's usually olive oil and canola oil in most, uh, most restaurants. They have like what is referred to as 80-20 because restaurants are always trying to cut costs wherever they can. Mm-hmm. Um, selling, selling food is like a lot less profitable than we probably think. And it's... Uh, you know, how owning a restaurant and stuff like that is is very very difficult. So wherever they can, they try to cut a corner uh, on expense, and so they have things like that that we don't really want in our food, but it ends up in our food. Yeah, yeah. and then go, so going back to the the air fried potatoes, um, if anybody's followed this podcast from Power Project Day One, then you'll know that like fries has always been like my my thing. Like that's like French I fries. I can't not have French fries. So doing um, shred again, my my uh, my pursuit to get abs. Like I didn't have any kind of like fast food fries or anything, but I made them at home. I know, and I'm like, you know what? Like this isn't this is great. I'm like okay, I'm never gonna have fries at a restaurant. They don't compare. They it's I mean, eventually at some point I, I will. I know I will. But like I've been in and out since then. I've been to other places where fries are available, and I'm like I. I don't even want to like it's crazy and so I wanted to point that out because I know somebody's like yeah right air fried potatoes that doesn't taste good I'm like dude I I had an addiction to fries like that was my thing that's all I ever wanted I never knew this about you yeah dude it was I mean Mark will he jokes about it now but like I'm sure it frustrated him back in the day because I'd be like oh I would you know stay on a clean diet but I'm just like out of all the goddamn things you can pick He's like they fucking get, French fries. They get cold and soft, and they're they're fucking bullshit. Like they they don't even <laughs> taste good anymore. And I'm like, dude, but that's that's my thing, you know. Yeah. And I, I do understand when they're hot; they taste pretty good. Yeah. Eating a couple of them is pretty good. Yeah, but I mean, just getting an air fryer changed all that, and now I'm good. Like I don't I don't need to have them anymore. I can make them at home, and they'll taste better. I'll feel better, and it'll just be better all around. And then, how much better do you feel? Like how much more fulfilled are you when you're looking down at a steak that you prepared? Right. And let's also say that you eat, uh, let's say you eat like three times a day, you know, three, let's say you eat three or four times a day. And let's say that you normally spend around 20 bucks. Like that's just off of like Instagram and kind of polling people and asking people, people are going back and forth between all these prices. But the one that kind of kept coming up was approximately around $20 a day, which I think would be about $140 a week. It might be a little less for some people. And some people might be like, my grocery bill is way less than 140 bucks. I, I spend 70 bucks, and that's food that lasts me the whole week. But you're not accounting for the, the Saturday night that you went out to eat, and you're, you're still missing some pieces uh, of the puzzle of things that you consume during the week that have calories, which would be mm. food, in my opinion. Your, your $5 Starbucks that you may have every day uh, is, is going towards that, uh, that bill. So anyway... Um, you know, let's just say that you normally spend around 20 bucks a day um, and even lower, but like around $20 a day. If you now start to eat like twice a day or once a day, you can either save money or you can put more more money. You can leave the money at the same and buy higher quality stuff. You know, so you have an option there. I, I just shifted this week to eating once a day. I'm trying the SPATH diet this week, which is uh, they only eat five times in a week. Uh, I'm not that crazy yet, so I'm just going to try seven seven meals. I'm just going to try one meal a day for the whole week. But, I mean, that's you're still going to eat a lot. You're going to consume a lot in that one meal. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but are you going to make up a hundred percent of the amount of food that you would normally eat? Probably not. And maybe on day one and day two, maybe you do, but after a little while of engorging yourself with food and, and really, uh, feasting, um, you'll probably calm yourself down and, and, make a little bit better decisions on how much you eat. Yeah, that's a, the next thing I was going to say was just fasting. Yeah. <laughs> if you're eating less, then you're spending much less on food. Um, when you when you do get to your one meal, uh, if you were to look at it as far as like plates go, how many meals are you having? Because I've been doing like, like three dinners and one at night, like on accident because I'm trying to catch up to my macros. But I'm just like, hmm, like I've been eating for like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> It's been awesome, but I'm just curious how you're doing it. So what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to have like a, you know, a one hour eating window. Okay. And so, you know, somebody that's listening to this that wants to give this a shot, uh, if you're worried about like protein and stuff, I would say even throw down a protein shake after your meal or with your meal. Um, I, I would do it after the meal probably so that way you can eat more actual food. Um, but I'm not really concerned about any of that. You know, so far it's uh, it, I'm only a couple days in, so I have no idea how my body will really uh, react to it. But last night I had, last night I went out with my wife, so that was expensive because I ordered two different steaks that were on the menu and salmon, which is just crazy. But if I ate that at home, which I did the night before, I ate that same thing at home. I mean, you're looking at like, uh, you're looking at spending around $12 as as opposed to, uh, probably like $80. Mm-hmm. I mean, that what a massive, like what a massive difference that is, right? Yeah. Like last night, because I do that one meal quite often, I had two ribeyes, uh, an omelet that had eight eggs, some hot links, some cheese on it, and then there was a protein shake. So that was all within, I ate that within like an hour. Yeah. And that was a lot of protein, a lot of fat. Um, and like when I have to do that one meal, that's what it turns into. It turns into just a massive feast. I, I did uh, eight ounces of chicken breast, half cup of rice, 16 ounces of really lean ground beef, whole cup of rice, uh, protein shake. And then because I had plenty of macros, I had plain ass Cheerios because mm. I wanted something crunchy. There we go. I think like conventionally, let's, like, well, let's say we look at the performance side of things. One meal, a lot of people don't think that you're going to be able to go to the gym or do the exercises you got to do or whatever well. Like yesterday, fasted, I was able to go to two jujitsu sessions and I felt like I thought I'd feel bad, but I felt great throughout both and I didn't have to take a break at all. It really comes down to just trying it out and giving yourself time to actually get used to be able to expend energy when you, you don't have food in your stomach. That's all it is. I think you could really or most people could really do well. It's just a scary thing to try because it's not popular. Yeah, and and you might not feel good, you know, like you may do it because like you have worked your way into it over a long period of time and so have I. And so if you're like, all right, starting on Monday, I'm going to try what Mark and Seema said, that might be crazy hard for you. You might really feel like crap and I don't even think that either one of us would recommend that to you. I I would think you you would want to try to build into it. If you never fasted before, trying to move into one meal a day is going to be very tough. However, I do think that food choices and uh, your frequency of your food, I think, are two things that could cure obesity uh, pretty rapidly in this country if people could figure out a way to shift their body, to shift themselves into uh, primarily eating one meal a day. I think fasting is so much more natural than we even give it credit for. The human body is designed and set up to go through some fasting and even some starvation. Mm-hmm. Um, the human body is designed to make ketones and to run off of fat and run off of ketones. Um, but like most people's bodies don't ever, I mean, think about someone who's <clears throat> someone who's excessively overweight. Their body probably never goes through the fat burning process at all. Their body probably never even produces hardly any ketones at all. And it's like, what's the consequences of that? I don't think that we know yet. But perhaps the consequences are diabetes. Perhaps the consequences are cancer. I mean, these are all things to consider and things to think about. And the reason why people are leaning so hard uh, towards these lower carb style diets. You know, like mentioning that, man, when I look back at how I was eating like in the past all day long, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, snack dinner like I but but like the thing is my eating frequency was so much there wasn't that much time that I was going without food 
now doing this or, or not eating for most of my day for what is it a year and a half now when I look back at that I, f- I feel like it'd be so weird and even on times like when I'm like okay I'm just gonna have breakfast with uh, my girlfriend or something today and I'm just gonna eat through the day it's weird and I, f- I don't feel nearly as good I just feel kind of like lethargic and tired I feel bad about it when I gotta eat breakfast you feel bad <laughs> yeah. I feel bad about it I'm like this I'm like this is gonna suck I gotta kind of eat all day because I know that I started once you kind of kick that off, then you have to kind of continue eating the whole day. It's hard to like, at that point, it's just hard to like not eat. Like you can do it, but then you, you end up just kind of wanting to get something else later on. So it's just, I feel like what we're doing, even though it's not popular, it's actually, it, like you said, it is more of a normal habit mm-hmm. or it used to be. Right. How about do you still you still fasting often right now or I fast every day. There we go. I'm still like there's there's the the amount of productivity I get through, done throughout the day is insane. Like I'll blink and I'm like, "Oh shit, I got to start eating soon." Yeah. Which isn't healthy, but beca- only <laughs> That's be- not unhealthy actually. But only because I go in knowing that I'm going to do that. So okay. like I don't start the day with like a coffee with like cream and like, you know, or have a snack here or there or whatever. But yeah, dude, fasting is great, especially for someone like me who doesn't necessarily love to pig out on food. Mm-hmm. By the time I do start eating, it's like, hey, like this is going to be fun. Let's see how many eggs I can fit into my macros because I still track. I know Mark has said like there's, you know, he doesn't like tracking or doesn't recommend it. But for me, it helps because I know I'm like, oh, I'm way behind. Like I need to eat a little bit more protein now. Yeah. So for in that aspect, it helps me out a ton. But yeah, dude, it's so much fun to be like, oh boy, like when you start like calculating stuff out and like, damn, I get to have eight eggs right now. I get to have a whole cup of rice or I get, you know, whatever I'm, I'm going to have to eat, you know, 16 ounces of chicken in this one meal. And it's like, oh, my. previous me would be like, that's impossible. Me today. It's like, no, that means I can put a bunch of seasoning right here. I can use chicken stock, uh, as much salt as I want. That's mm-hmm. what some, that's something I never knew I could do. Like yeah. I thought you're not supposed to have that much salt. Now it's like, oh, wait, no, go nuts. It's fine. <laughs> I almost forgot about, um, I used to eat these steaks all the time when I was broke, and they're called eye of round steaks. They're extremely mm-hmm. lean. They're extremely lean. They're, they're like just as lean as chicken pretty much. Um, flavor-wise, they're not, you know, they're not super tender. I was going to reach for my phone too. Yeah, flavor-wise, they're not super tender, but eye of round steaks, very inexpensive. Now, when you look at them, you're going to be like, there's no way like I can get full off of those because they look like two little hockey pucks. They're very small looking. Um, but because they're, they're primarily protein, you're going to get full on them pretty fast. So um, even, even last night I had a flat iron steak was the first thing that I ate yesterday. And it was going to be something I wanted to mention on the podcast is, you know, that the stuff that's been shared with us about protein being satiating and, and uh, from Ken Berry and from, uh, Dr. Baker and Paul Saladino, and it just keeps coming up. I mean, we just keep hearing it uh, over and over, over again, especially Ted Neiman, who's saying he doesn't even believe that protein should count uh, as a calorie. Those guys had such great information and such great wisdom towards uh, protein. When you are when you are protein focused and you have protein first, it annihilates your appetite. So I like when I went to this restaurant last night, my, my fear was that I'm going to sit there and just keep ordering food forever. Mm -hmm. But when I ate the flat iron steak, which is a a pretty lean form of meat, once I got through that, I was very calm and I was like, Oh, I'm going to be more than satisfied with what I have in front of me. But, but when I was looking at the food with my eyes, I was like, this ain't going to work. You know, I'm like in fat, in fat Mark Bell panic mode. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to need to wash this down with some ice cream or something. But, you know, I, I was uh, really kind of sweating it. But like, it's very, very true. When you eat lean, you eat leaner meats or eat protein and you start to consume a large amount of protein, it will start to fill you up. The other thing is that's amazing about steak. And this gives it an advantage over pretty much everything else. It's, it's, it's just, it's tough to chew. And then what have we learned about hunger what have we learned about being satiated right we've learned that it takes time Mm -hmm. so you know if you if you want to get full uh fast then you know get get a steak that's fairly lean it's going to take you about 10 minutes to get through it even if you're crazy hungry probably anyway Mm -hmm. just with all the damn chewing that you have to do and then the signals in your body and the hormones in your body are now like hey like you know we're we're pretty satisfied. We're pretty good. And you, maybe you have to eat a little bit more, but 
you pretty much be done at that point. And then uh, how about stuff that we should be avoiding? Because I think the misconception about uh, like eating healthier costs more because like a, a Quest bar costs more than a Snickers, you know, like whatever it is, like, oh, because it says low fat, it's going to be more expensive or because it's low carb, it's more expensive. So like we'll call it fake health foods. Like, yeah, do- there's a lot. There's a lot of shit to really get over, get into mm-hmm. and to uh, knock out of people's lives. I mean, first of all, if you're broke, you shouldn't be going on vacation. I mean, that's number one. Like I've never I've never been anywhere in my fucking life until I made some money. Like I even as a kid, we never went. We never really went anywhere. Um so that I think that's number one. I think that you're kidding yourself. You're like, I can't afford my food, but you have every goddamn streaming thing possible on your fucking TV. <laughs> and then you're like, I can't afford, I can't afford to do carnivore diet. It's like, you fucking kidding me. It's been 125 bucks on fucking television. It's a fucking joke. Like people are just, people have a broke mindset. And that's what drives me nuts when I see those comments. Cause they're like, Oh, well it's easier for you. Cause you got money. I'd done it before without money, and I, I remember what it was like, and it, it was hard. It was difficult. It was more difficult, but it's not impossible. You buy bulk eggs, buy bulk hamburger meat, um, you know, buy shit that's on sale. Go to, go to stores that, um, you know, that, that aren't overpricing their foods or have high, the highest quality of meats. Like, don't, you know, don't bother to go into a fucking Whole Foods and stuff like that. Yeah, and if your iPhone doesn't look like it got shot up by a drive-by, you should not be ha- looking at the new iPhone 11 or the 12 or whatever and then complain that you don't have enough money. Yeah, it's like 1200 bucks or something, right? <laughs> it's, like, it's so expensive. But, yeah, I see the same thing. It's like, oh, I can't eat healthy. It's like, those Jordans were really expensive. And you have a new <laughs> pair every day. <laughs> you always have the new one that comes out. I don't understand why you can't get, like, some legit food, but... <laughs> Anyway, yeah. That's one, like, yeah, you got to budget everything out, not just food. You got to figure out exactly what all of your money is going towards. Mm-hmm. Because I know when I was, <laughs> I was spending some money on stupid things when I was in college. And I was like, why am I, why don't I have money? <laughs> but it's because I was wasting money on literally stupid shit. Supplements, you know, mm-hmm. protein bars and stuff. I mean, you just have to, you have to put a value on it. Like, what, what do you value it at? Mm-hmm. Is it more important than you getting sound nutrition? And uh, there's not a lot of things I would put over top of sound nutrition. So, you know, having some supplements here and there to mix up uh, some flavor, to have a protein shake, as you were mentioning, or to have something just a little outside of your diet, um, that totally makes sense. And that's being very reasonable. And And you should have some stuff. You should have a fucking beer. You should have some wine or something like that here and there. But you know, try to figure out a way, like, do you need to go to a bar to do it? Cause you're going to spend a fuck ton more money doing it that way. than you're going to be like, just grab a couple yeah. course lights with your buddies or something like yeah. that. Okay. So then biggest takeaway for people to take home with them from Mark Bell on budgeting and staying on your diet and whatnot. I'll sum it up real quick. Make more money, get a job <laughs> well, or go. a second job. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, we could end it right. No, there. I just I, I'm a true believer in that. I'm I I mean I mean this, and I people will think I'm an asshole for it, but like I I never think that anything's too expensive. I always think you should figure out a way to make more money. Figure out a way to make. You know, I know people are talking about being uncomfortable. Well, the reason we're talking about being uncomfortable so much, the reason why you keep hearing that so much, is that so you can be more comfortable in other areas. You know, you, what we're looking to try to gain through our nutrition in the first place is some sort of freedom. Uh, we're, we're trying to gain some like fitness freedom, some freedom with our body mm. so that our body feels good all the time so that we're not lethargic. We're making an investment into our body. I feel better now than I ever have in my entire life. And then when I went to do my walk run yesterday, I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to run the whole thing. And it felt really good. And I, I, you know, haven't, I haven't run a mile in probably two years or something like that. And, and previously before that, I have just no running experience at all. So I'm feeling better all the time, but it's an investment that I've made in myself to try to make myself uh, feel better. It's something that had to be forced. It's something that had to be worked at. It's something that really uh, took a long time. And that when I was younger and didn't have money for stuff, I never really sat around and thought, oh, I wish I could do that. I was always like, I'm going to figure that out one day. I, I'm going to, I'm going to up, up, you know, move up the ladder. And then I, you see like, um, I see people like Grant Cardone with like a private jet and stuff like that. And I'm like, that's fucking cool. I, I'd, love to, I'd love to be able to try to figure that out. I don't know if I ever will, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try to figure that out. So always work on 
you know, uh, leveling your way up. And then we gave you guys a bunch of, uh, a bunch of good tips on what you can do, um, you know, eating on a budget. Yeah, and if you guys have any more tips, wherever you see this posted, whether it be YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, wherever the hell it is, uh, leave your tips in the uh, the comment section. That'll be great. And I we have a couple ones from Twitter. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, that guy said super something. What does that say? Where are we at? Uh, at the bottom. He said go to Sam's Club. Yeah, Super Mercados. Yeah, yeah, supermercados. Yeah, yeah, something he gets online, I guess. Supermercados. Uh, it's an online meat box. Allows me to splurge a little on items. Yeah, anyway, I, I don't, I've never heard of it, but we should yeah. check it out. I never heard of it either, but yeah, you, you just, you know, fucking Google some of this stuff, too. Yeah. And uh, you'll you'll find a lot of great information. There you go. Boom. Boom. Where can people find you, Andrew? At I am Andrew Z, but if you guys really want to party, it's at MB Power Project on Twitter. At Mark Bell's Power Project on Instagram, uh, YouTube.com slash, I think it's Mark Bell's Power Project, I'll, whatever, I'll check it. LinkedIn.com slash IN slash Power Project. We're on Twitch, we're on Mixer, we're all over the place. All the links will be down in the description. In SEMA, where you be. And in SEMA Yang on Instagram and YouTube, and SEMA Yin Yang on TikTok and Twitter. Mark. At Mark Smelly Bell on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Thank you guys so much for following along. Really appreciate it. Today is day number 10. We're in that double digits for World Carnivore Month. And if you haven't jumped in on it yet, you still got three weeks. We still got three weeks of uh, carnivore it up. So please join in. You can check out my Facebook group, which is uh, Mark Bell's uh, <laughs> Carnivore Challenge. There we go. Took me a second to think about it. But Go over there and check it out because a lot of people are sharing information amongst each other, which I think is actually a lot more valuable than just getting information from me because now you're sharing information with people that are just getting started on the diet uh, just as you might be. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never a strength. Catch you all later.